Max Manite is and uh, joins us from there and uh, continuing our focus on the fact that uh, Boko Haram has uh, offered to negotiate declaring ceasefire and the president in return has said that uh, well yes we welcome that offer and they will go ahead and consider that. Morning and thank you for joining us. Now that uh, we've seen the ceasefire being offered and the presidency accepting to negotiate to come to talks and see how they can sort this out, you think finally we're on the right path? We have always been on the right path. And uh, I, first of all, commend uh, the president, uh, Jonathan, for remaining steadfast. He had always said, time without number, that he's open to negotiations, that he would like to negotiate contrary to the Christian right fundamentalists who kept saying that we should not negotiate with Boko Haram. I also want to commend the new National Security Advisor and his policy, and the DG of SSS, including the Director of Operations and other special forces that are in this place. Without the pressure being exerted on the leadership of Boko Haram, we wouldn't come to where we are today. And uh, by that pressure, what I mean is simple. They are losing candidates for suicide bombing. Their own families are being affected. Businesses are being affected. Farming season are being affected. So the whole economy of the Northeast is in shambles. It has come home to roost. So the stick effect of the federal government is working. Uh, However, let, pardon me, we let, let me are jump in there just to make this point clear. In, in case it didn't come out right, well, yes, uh, Dr. Ruben Abate says that the presidency has gotten the offer. Uh, that does not mean that they've accepted the terms and conditions. Again, in case that didn't come out right, as I initially did ask. But well, I will come into conditions. I, I will come in. Go ahead. The issue of condition must be mutually beneficial. The federal government does not have to accept the condition of the so-called leadership. We don't need to go to Saudi Arabia to negotiate. We never went to anywhere to negotiate the end of the civil war. We never went to anywhere to negotiate the end of the militancy in the, in the South South. It was purely local content activity. Therefore, negotiation must be in Nigeria. What is required by Boko Haram is total unconditional surrender. And what is required by the federal government is to live under the ethos of no victor, no vanquished. We did this during the Civil War. We did this during amnesty. And then every member of Boko Haram must have their biometrics data in the records of federal government the same way we do have of the militancy in the South South. To say that federal government must come to Saudi Arabia to negotiate is unacceptable. And this is the time for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to invite the ambassador of Saudi Arabia and ask him, what particular area of influence does Saudi Arabia have with Boko Haram? This is the time to bring in the Director General, Nigerian Intelligence Agency, and his operations department and ask questions. Who are the Nigerians who are Boko Haram's in Saudi Arabia? They ought to know. They ought to know. And I saw the list that they have chronicled as their agents of representation. Yeah. What do you think I about found the list? the only credible name there. Pardon me? Is Shetima Ali Mongomu. He is a, an, an octogenarian that I have come to know. And this is the same man when Senator Sharif was governor, criticized Senator Sharif, and the governor was alleged to have sent his militancy unit called ECOMOG to go and murder Shetima Ali Mongonu at that particular point in time. I visited him, I commiserated with him, and he has remained resolute in telling the truth about what is going on in Borono. Another person I wish I had seen on that list is General Abakiari, who fought gallantly during the Civil War, who is a straightforward man, but he's not on that list. 
When you look at people like Senator Abba Ibrahim, it's very laughable. A former governor of the state, of Yobe State, who, whose lack of initiative constituted the greater number of illiterates in that particular zone that constituted a clear and present danger we are experiencing. He is not qualified to be a negotiator. But then again, this is the right of the Boko Haram. Ambassador Gatimari is a respectable man in the area. Barrister Mrs. Wakil, I do not know her pedigree. However, what is of importance is that the likes of Adamushi Roma and the likes of uh, Adamu Fika, who are from Yobe State, were ignored by Boko Haram. And these are the people that parade themselves as northern elders. That is a lesson for Nigerians to learn. Okay, the, uh, the spokesperson for the sect, he, several times they've come up to say one person that was supposed to be their spokesperson is not there, they're dissociating with, from that person. What do you think? Is this the right person? And what do you think of their demands? Are they realistic? <laughs> well, uh, the fact that a group that a couple of months ago that said that they are not amenable to negotiation have come out to say that they want to negotiate. It is because, the, again, what I said, the stick effect of the security services is working. It's strangulating their operationality. It is crippling businesses in their area. These are all self-inflicted wounds. And the community are beginning to say to Boko Haram in their midst, we are tired of this. We don't want this. We in the Southeast experienced this towards the end of the Civil War. When we began to tell our soldiers, we are tired of the war. We have suffered collateral casualties. We want an end to this war. And that helped to expedite the end of the war. Those in the militancy in South South who thought they were fighting for a just cause only for us to find out they were fighting for economic and criminal cause. We are being told by the community, after the devastation of Odi, after the devastation of Baramatu, they began to say, we are tired of militancy. We don't want to be part of this anymore. And that led to the easier negotiation with federal government. What I think the federal government ought to do, especially in collaboration with Northern Governors Forum, is to say, look, we are our brother's keepers. If Boko Haram surrenders without any condition, we are not going to prosecute anybody. But there's something that is quite important in their demand, and that is the demand for Ali Modu Sharif to be prosecuted. Uh -huh. They have to show greater evidence. And how do you show that greater evidence? There are four members of the police that are supposed to be on trial. There are still two years in that trial for the extrajudicial murder of Mohammed Yusuf and Foy. The justice must be expedited, and sentencing of those people must be seen to be in the interest of the nation where justice is upheld. And those people can be interrogated and interviewed to tell the country and the judiciary what role Ali Modi Sharif had played. Based on the former man of the former speaker that just left the air, um, Alaji Lima, it appears that Ali Modi Sharif engaged in proactive blackmailing of a president. When he went to Jonathan and said, though I am AMPP, but we are going to vote for you in a mass in Borono State. So that sensing that there will be moments like today when the demand for his prosecution will come and the president's hands are tied to the extent that he may not allow justice to flow. The president has confessed time without number that cabals are strangulating him, and this may be one of those issues of political cabalism.